I see you, and we saw your question, so poor cabbages. We hope that not all of them have, um, have been decimated. When you get set up, and hello, Christine. So I'll go by order of whoever comes in, and that's Andrea first, and then Christine. So Andrea, whenever you're ready, we, um, we can talk about your, your garden. So let me see if I can unmute you here. Hmm. I think you already are unmuted. So we saw that your question was, let me pull that up again. What has eaten one of my collards? No rabbits around here and leaves look like lace, not bites. Hmm. If I can't see a bug or caterpillar. Now whatever is eating, whatever it is, uh, is eating my broccoli leaves. So that's what you, you sent in today. Is that right, Andrea? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great. Yes, that's what I sent in. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, so all the collards are decimated? Well, it, I just said, I have two collard plants. And they're completely opposite ends of my little garden. Yes. And one, one of them's just doesn't have any leaves. It has the little in stems of the leaves. Mm -hmm. So that's my situation. But the other one's fine. Is the other one closer it's, to your house? Uh, they're both. They're both in our little car courtyard area. Yes. And my garden's like 12 feet by 4 feet. And the, the collard is starting to be a little bit eaten, but it's my broccoli. I think it's a broccoli that is now being eaten, the leaves. And it, it actually has a little broccoli started uh, in the middle so I don't know I've um, never I've never really grown it so uh, we, we are familiar with those bites because that happens to us too when we have a big insect insect infestation but Dave go ahead yeah what's uh, you said that you didn't see any bugs right because it's usually for us I'm sure it's it's different uh, if you're in Texas, but uh, what are the those red bugs? The um, uh, assassin bugs. It's uh, next. Uh, do you remember the? Yeah, uh, harlequin bugs. Harlequin bugs. Mm -hmm. I love the brassicas. Uh, if you check the leaves, do you see any eggs anywhere on the leaves? Today is the first time that I saw something, and it was on the. Uh, broccoli and it was down at the bottom of the one leaf they were little tiny yellow balls yes <laughs> tiny, tiny yellow balls okay it's definitely eggs so I just smashed those but I haven't ever seen anything before and I looked on my other I have a cauliflower and the other collard, and I have a cabbage. They don't seem to be bothering the cabbage. Well, they're going for the tastiest stuff first. <laughs> anyway, I, I just bought like 10 plants, and so I, I don't have a lot of plants, but I just was experimenting. <laughs> so, And I don't have that much space. Yeah, it, it doesn't, uh, collards can get really big, so you, you don't have to worry about a number of plants. We did some collards this year that, that got huge, like literally the size of a small table was each collard plant. Oh, wow. 
I would say like 50 pounds of collard leaves from uh, the school garden. So it can be very productive. Uh, these ones that you uh, that you bought are pretty small, though, right? Well, um, they were, but I mean they've grown. Mm -hmm. um, but they're. I'm trying to. You know, they're bigger. The leaves are as big as my hand, probably, or maybe a little bit bigger. I don't know. Are you still now, getting all that? Sorry. Now they are. What? Uh, are you still getting a lot of rain down there? It slowed down a little bit, but we, oh wow. We had, our yard's just been soggy. <laughs> At least no flooding. Oh, good. Yeah, that means you have good um, drainage. Yes, drainage. <laughs> and that means like the, the plants are probably really sopping up all that water. Um, yeah. The only thing is like, uh, as to the eggs, when um, I have a, a little photo here of um, what they might look like, it, can you tell me if they look, because this is what we know, um, the harlequin bugs are what we know decimates our collards or mm -hmm. our kale, but those eggs aren't orange, but the orange ones seem to be this other bagrata bug that looks like a harlequin. Um, you said they were orange, right? Yeah, they they are much more um, round than that, and they're very very tiny. Mm. Um, and there weren't that many of them. It was just on that one leaf, and I've looked on the collar that just became lace at first until it was all gone uh, except this middle stem thing mm -hmm. uh, it was I never found anything on it I looked at different times during the day and I never I even looked at night one time I don't know. Do they fly away or something when you're? Yeah, they they can fly if there's not a lot of them. Um, the problem is when they lay eggs, depending on the timing. Uh, then you can get like uh, infestation. Uh, it, I mean, there's so many different varieties of beetles. Mm -hmm. I, I'd hazard a guess that it, if it's like pock marks, then it's probably some variety of beetle. Yeah, it's just like they didn't eat from the edges. They ate in the middle, like little little bites, uh, holes, or yeah. I don't know what you'd call it. Um, are it, are they small enough that like you don't have enough of these that maybe you could? Uh, do you have any tomato cages? Yeah. Because uh, one thing you could do is you could actually uh, cover them. Uh huh. Well and see, if I, see if I caught them. <laughs> yeah, in inside the cage. Yeah. No, I yeah. mean it would it would protect it from the. They might you still might get a little bit of damage, but it it would definitely slow them down. Uh, we we use something called. Uh, maybe I can fish it out. It's called uh, row cover. I'll go. I'll go uh, get a sample of it. I'll be right back. Okay. How's the weather for y'all? Oh my goodness, Andrea! It is so freezing here. <laughs> Thirty-seven degrees. My fingers are chapping. Oh. Um, yes. How about well, you guys? We actually already had um, below freezing, like thirty one or 32 not not this week a couple of weeks ago it was really weird for houston wow. is that it one was, of the first time the lowest it's been or well it's yeah. it's the lowest that i've known of from you know before january or february yeah. but um i don't know i didn't look to see what the you know the lowest temperature ever recorded but it was just out of the ordinary we covered all our plants and they did fine and it you know it warms 
he didn't even warm up a lot that particular time like into the 40s but now we're back to more normal like it started out about 45 and got up to maybe 70 today wow so oh that is weird that you had a cold spell yeah my my suspicion is since we've had a lot of rain um we'll probably have a lot of snow as well in the areas that'll that get down to freezing is we actually snow. had we actually had snow that the night the evening before that but it, the ground wasn't cold enough nothing was cold enough for mm -hmm. it to stick and it didn't last long so that was weird mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah yeah i have a feeling that we'll have more snow days and you know where, wherever it's rained a lot that is mm -hmm. so dave has the agribon agribon right dave is that the name of the yeah you can get this off Amazon or whatever. It's basically a plastic breathable cover. Oh, it's breathable. So That's it, good. Yeah, it lets in like 80% light, but it provides uh, a, some insulating effect. So mm -hmm. I, uh, it gets pretty cold around here. Like today, it's going down to 30 degrees. So I, I make these low tunnels where I cover, uh, I, make, I have food. Yeah, I've covered. seen the picture. Yeah, so it's it's not just useful for temperature protection. It's also useful for, if you want to protect plants from um, if you have a troublesome insect problems, then that can be like a very effective way to block them out. Okay, I never thought of that. That'll be great. I will. I will try to figure out something. Because I would like to at, at least have some collards. I did, um, one day, I did use a leaf from each of my, um, my cabbage, my collard, my cauliflower, and my broccoli, and put them in my smoothie. <laughs> oh, wow. Just, just, I mean, they were small. I didn't yeah. want to ruin the plants, but I was like, I'm going to get something off these. <laughs> yeah, congratulations, Andrea. That's great. Yeah. And then for being, you know, incorporating them into a smoothie. A, was it a green smoothie or just like mixed of everything? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've been doing this 75% um, greens and uh, like 25% fruit and uh, like a quarter to a third cup of chia seeds it's been really helpful that's My great husband and i have been doing that so oh that's great it's yes fun. share yep whenever you can share your recipes in the forum for that okay. one i like i like smoothies too and i put um right now we've been experimenting there's there's some mushroom powders that oh i've heard of that have you that mm -hmm. is supposed to make you more energetic <laughs> and because like i'm always you know tired with the kids i'm like okay maybe this is this is going to be an extraordinarily tiring day then i'll put a little bit of a mushroom called cordyceps <laughs> in it yeah like a little powder but yeah I'm sure other people have different variations I, i've heard of that uh, i had i raised five kids so i understand your tiredness <laughs> oh wow oh my goodness you have to give me tips okay and I homeschool too oh god bless you oh my goodness yeah we homeschooled one we homeschool them it you know on and off throughout the years so right oh yeah. I understand <laughs> thank you thank you Andrea thank you <laughs> all right so do we have, um, I've written down everything we've talked about, the beetles, and I'll do a little bit more research about what they might be. But if you get a chance to take a picture of the eggs, if you find them, then, you know, we can identify them, help you identify them if you don't do it before we do. Um, okay. And yes, and then I'll send you a link as well for 
where you can purchase the Agribon row cover. I saw that you could get some off of Amazon as well. But oh, cool. It's called Agribon, and I'll send you the link on an email that follows this call. That sounds good. All right, and anything else? Oh, I planted fennel, and it's doing really well. It, just one, I have one plant, you know, <laughs> and I, yeah. I planted dill, and it's doing well. And I had a bell pepper that was covered up during the summer by our tomato plants. But when I took my tomato plants out, it, it has like four or five uh, green bell peppers on it. Awesome. So, so that's cool. And I'm trying to think if there was anything. Else. Oh, I planted um, garlic chives. Great. So, Awesome. And that's great. Yeah, dressing. Perennials too, so the, they'll. Oh, cool. They'll survive. So, all of those are experimental, <laughs> <laughs> except yeah. I have grown peppers before. Yeah! Wow. Um, I Dave has this habit. I'm not too good about this, but he has the habit of um, weighing everything that we we bring in, so that he he is like, okay, this year we brought in this much produce but as long as you you can record it or take pictures then you can kind of assess how how well you did this year and then see what you how you'd like to grow next year cool that's, that's a good it. idea yeah I, I have not looked at y'all's site enough so um but you're still inspiring me and i'm i'm gonna find time especially when it's so cold <laughs> yes so before the end of this, this night, we will walk you through like the new little mini course that we have. It's oh, an indoor sprouting course that you can do and then you get a little bit more greens into your, your, um, your table and it's super, super easy and super fun and rewarding instantly. So um, we'll, talk about, yeah, we'll, we'll walk you through that in just a bit, but we will now... Um, talk to Christine. So thanks so much, Andrea, for hopping Thank in. You. All right. And I will mute you and unmute Christine. Hi, Christine. Who, Christine, is this? Christine. Oh, Jody. hi. Can you hear what? me? Yes. Oh, great. <laughs> hi. Um, this is Christine Galganitis. Yeah. Hello, Christine. Yes, we have three Christines in the oh, wow. group. Oh, wow. Yes. And one of them is from, from Brussels, even. So I was oh my! Well, well, I'm the one from your. I'm in your backyard. I'm in Alexandria. Oh yes, <laughs> yes. Making the freezing cold weather right now. Yeah. Yes, I just went outside a little while ago just to look at the lights, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so cold. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> you know the funny thing is, speaking of our area, yesterday we put our grow light on on free cycle, and and somebody came in and picked it up from Ashburn. And then, oh, and I asked wow. her, so are you, are you a gardener? And she said, yeah. And I'm like, oh, we're gardeners too. And then she said, are you Dave and Nikki? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the odds of that happening are really, really low. So I felt oh, like, wow, oh, what, a, what, what a neat little meeting. It was just like meeting a, a friend. So anytime oh, you want to come goodness. over. <laughs> I love so that. Fun. Yeah. That's hysterical celebrities <laughs> <laughs> it didn't it, it felt like totally like yeah because our group is really small um, yeah. and, and spread out across America too so it's not it's not likely that that would happen so it's just funny that is bizarre yeah. well thank you for taking me in, in this call this is my first one I haven't had much time to devote to the course no yet, but I'm really impressed with all of the content and a little overwhelmed. <laughs> oh, okay. So we don't want to get you overwhelmed, but you, um, no, no, no. You it's these, <laughs> yeah, you take these Zoom calls as often or as little as you need them. You need to, because it's just, we're just here every month, but if you, you need to take a break, you know, we know how it is. So yes. Oh, awesome. Tell us about your garden and growing situation or yeah, what you're up to now. Yes. Um, well, I, sorry I didn't upload the photo um, of my drawings. I have a garden notebook. I've, I've, only, I've been growing for about four years, um, but I'm self-taught, so I'm really looking forward to learning from you guys. Um, and I have a very similar situation to you all. It's, I'm in a middle-unit townhome, um, really not much space. I have 
it's five raised beds um, and two of them are active right now. So I'm just kind of wondering um, what I can do um, over the winter, if I could try winter sewing. I've never done that before. Um, I don't know, any advice you have? Cause I really am, I, I'm a learn as you go kind of person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's great. That's a great attitude to have. Dave, go ahead, because he's the winter gardener more than oh, great. indoor gardening. He's like outdoor gardening. But it's amazing that you have you have row covers, Christine. I do not know. Okay. I, I wanted to try that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So any advice you have? I'd probably recommend that uh, doing the row covers because if you're gonna sow winter hardy crop, mm -hmm. you have to get them established a little bit earlier before so that they'll make it uh, establish a root system mm -hmm. so they'll make it through the freezing temperatures. Uh, you might still be able to get away with putting in some garlic without any low cover. I, di I did that. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, you can pretty much grow uh, anything that's reasonably uh, cold-hardy, cold like, like anything that can tolerate a light freeze with a row cover. So what I do is... Um, I, I take I get electrical half inch conduit from one of these uh, big box stores like a Home Depot or, or whatever, and I use something called a bender. You can get these online too, a hoop bender, and I, I bend it. The only reason I do that is because it's a little more permanent. I did that maybe two or three years ago, and I haven't had to replace it at all. But you could probably take PVC pipe as well, mm -hmm. like that white pipe that you see in the stores. And that you don't need a bender for. I think you can just bend that manually. You make it into a semicircle uh, and then put it at regular spacing. So uh, how big are your raised bed? Mm -hmm. um, six foot by two and a half. Okay. Something like that. They're pretty small. <laughs> so you, you might be able to make small hoops that go mm -hmm. completely over the bed, or you could just turn them on the side so that you, mm -hmm. uh, they go along that six foot length. Um, then you need to just anchor them in the ground so that they're, uh, that's easier with the electrical conduit because it's naturally keeps its shape. Um, oh, okay. That was my question. I've never, I'm like, how do I, <laughs> I've been wanting to try this for years now. Okay. How do you how do you anchor um, PVC? Uh, so I found that the easiest uh, technique is to actually just kind of uh, dig in the soil. I don't know how mm -hmm. how uh, rocky your soil is, mm -hmm. but um, usually if I spend a little more a little of time just kind of uh, making a little groove for it. Then once I put all the plastic on top of it, it and I pull it taut, it keeps it mm -hmm. in place. So it's more like a skeleton, like a ribbing. It doesn't have to provide all of the, the uh, structural support. So once you have the, uh, 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 Nikki has a, I think you, you, you can send a link. We have a blog article. Yes, yeah, so if you press uh, go to gromyownfood.com and just click on blog, it's the newest one, and it shows um, this picture of what Dave was talking about with this electrical conduit pipes here underneath his row cover. The breathable row cover is the one that they just put on here, but now with the cold, you've added another layer, Dave? Is that right? Yeah, so uh, this kind of cover works well down to maybe like 32, but... Um, what I do is I add another layer of clear plastic on top of that. So it's kind of like double insulation. And that's really effective all the way down to like 15 degrees. Oh, wow. So that, uh, I, this be uh, bed that you can see that we're covering here, it's filled with um, bro uh, broccoli and uh, collards and uh, carrots and all kinds of stuff. So you can definitely keep that stuff going through the winter. Mm -hmm. uh, Nix, if you click on that link, Gardening for All Four Seasons. Okay. 
and we'll send you the the this link. If you if you scroll down, you can. I think I explained the materials that you need. So here is the how to build load panels. Um, purchase one. Great. Yeah, this electrical conduit. It's. Oops, I just stopped share. Sorry. Um, it's cheaper, um, but sturdier than the um, PVC pipe. So this is it on Home Depot. This is what you would be looking for. And it's just like a long stick, three, three dollars, three thirty two each. But then when you um, use this, this is the bender. So you'd have to buy this like outside of it to bend it. And maybe, you know, you or your husband can like, can, can bend it into hoops like that. Then you would have, mm -hmm. basically these, these hoops we've used like for the last five years over and over again. But oh, the, wow. yes, but the PVC pipes, which we've also tried before, they're easier to bend and they're easier to find, but then mm -hmm. um, they've broken. What it, what is plastic is there are these little clips that um, hold the, the, the sheet in place. And you, you don't even have to do that. You could just put stones. If you pull it taut, mm -hmm. because when it's no, the problem is when it snows, they they tend to sag. Mm -hmm. If yeah. you pull it really taut, uh, so you secure the ends with stones or, so or something sag. else like that, like a stake. So here you can see where it collapsed. The, this was a couple of years ago. We got something like twenty or thirty inches of snow. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> the stuff survived, but it wasn't too happy. Like it. it pulled the plastic and it sagged a lot but i think if you i didn't really pull it taut and i think if you if you kind of secure it a little bit more then the snow will slide off more at least that's my my theory okay uh, so what kind of things were you interested in growing over the winter oh gosh um, i don't know i mean i have I have a um, be, beyond your wonderful alliums that you shared with us. Oh my goodness. Um, I have um, some carrots, um, kale and spinach. So okay, nothing too much. Still some yeah. herbs going from before, but <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah. yeah. And if you do get spinach going, share with us because we I know do spinach really well in this area. But yes, I, me neither. <laughs> I've seen it in farmers markets. So somewhere in Virginia, they were doing it, but I don't know yeah. how they got it going. They get always no. flowers before it's. I know. <laughs> I never have, but I had like a random packet, and I was like, eh, why not? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'll throw it in there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll see. Do you have any other suggestions of anything to try? So uh, we do, I do all my seed starts indoors before I mm -hmm. try to put it outside. Uh, that gives it enough of a boost that when I do put it outside in the cold weather, it doesn't immediately uh, die. So um, uh, let's see. So, so uh, are you thinking of doing any perennials? Oh, I, you know, I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't going to, but if it's not too late, sure, why not? Because <laughs> uh, one of the things in a few weeks we'll be uh, discussing on our site and, and emails is uh, how to do indoor preparation for, like, kind of planning out your season ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So the, there's some things that take a little longer to grow, like some of the herbs. But if you start them, like we start everything from seed generally. So uh, just depending on the timing, we walk the timing back. Uh, for example, like lavender and rosemary and things like that. I'll actually start them in the deep winter indoors. And by the time it's warming up outside, they're already ready to go to be transplanted outside. Uh, okay. You said you're growing some herbs. Are, they, are you growing mm -hmm. outdoors? Uh, yeah, it's just leftover from the summer, like oregano and parsley and sage are still going strong. Oh, those are all perennials, so. Yes, yeah. They do really well for me. Great. Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, I, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. 
Um, um, I did have another question. Um, uh, I've, I've been wondering about, um, I don't remember what it's called. I've seen people starting their seeds in the winter, like outdoors in, in like milk jugs, like gallon milk jugs. Is that something that is in the course? Uh, yeah, so there's, there's something called a cloche. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's an old French uh, uh, farmer's market technique for mm -hmm. protecting plants. Uh, the, maybe like a hundred years ago, they used to mass produce those things. So they were really easy to find, like really high quality glass cloches. Uh, nowadays, it's pretty hard to find a good uh, quality glass one. They sell a bunch of plastic ones. Mm -hmm. But um, I always wonder about the insulating ability of some of those things. Uh, one of the things that has cropped up recently that uh, I haven't experimented with personally, but it sounds interesting, is they call it a, a wall of water. So the, the idea is that uh, the, the sides of the container that's covering the plant are actually filled with, with liquid, and that freezes, and somehow that actually raises the temperature inside the container. So even if the water freezes, the, th the things inside the container don't freeze. So it provides an insulating effect. Hmm. Wow, that's really interesting. Uh, I think your best bet though is to use the, the low tunnel, what they call low tunnels, because they're, you can cover a whole bed. So it's generally a little more it's almost as much effort as, as finding decent quality cloches. Mm -hmm. And then the problem with cloches, if you get good gloss ones, when we get these random Virginia day, uh, January uh, days mm -hmm. that get into like 60s. Yes, it's, the it's best. <laughs> so you don't have to mm -hmm. worry that, about that with uh, a low tunnel. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I would that, say that the, sounds good. Yeah, with the milk jugs, um, I've seen a lot of that done in school settings where the teachers will have them have the kids use milk jugs and um, uh, as their cold frame or to start their seeds early. And usually the seeds that they would start would be kale, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the winter hardier ones um, and, le and lettuce or peas sometimes, but they wouldn't start it as early as now. They probably go into a little bit more of like, because then you'd be waiting longer with the kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> probably start them like in, in February with the cloches or March with the cloches in this kind of, in our, in our climate. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's not a bad I idea if you have, um, you know, spare milk jugs, that you wanna that you wanna just experiment and see what, what can happen with that. Mm -hmm. I, might, I might try it. <laughs> uh, one other tip in terms of like choice of plants to to uh, use for the the winter. A lot of people start peas uh, in the spring, but they uh, peas are actually more of like a warm weather crop. They actually prefer it a little warmer. So what we do is we start, I found an early fava bean. And it's, yeah. yeah, it's really hardy. Like it can, it can take uh, freezing temperatures. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, and it'll start producing pods around the middle of April. Oh, wow. And, okay. And I, I nice. sow them pretty quickly. So in a... In one or two beds, I can get like 10 pounds of water bean. That's I can send a link to the specific variety that I found is effective. That'd be great. Wow, thank you. The, the great thing about the fava beans is they're also doing some nitrogen uh, fixing since they're a legume. So uh, it produces a, a thick stalk mm -hmm. that you don't have to support and then in the summertime, I just chop and drop the, the leaves, and it, it provides fertilizer for my summer crops. Yes, that's right. Fava beans, oh, is early. Wow. Fava beans are earlier than, than peas. And um, if 
and it's always good in every season, Christine. I always, I, I may like say this every, every, every time I have a Zoom call, but every season that you have, every bed has a legume growing in it. Even mm -hmm. if, for example, you won't necessarily eat the peas or the peas will come up and then it'll, they'll die and wither. It's, and, uh, it's good to have legumes because of the nitrogen fixation that happens mm -hmm. in the soil. So flower beans are a great one for the spring because they'll come in, they come in, yeah, put the earliest, earlier than any other legume that I know of, except maybe clover if it's already established. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's a, a bush variety then? Oh, of uh, flower beans, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. It is a bush variety. Wow. right? There. I've never um, had any success before with beans. Um, so I would definitely have that, give that a try. Yeah, so I've written that down here so I can, we can send you that as well. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, a lot of people will talk about doing uh, winter cover crops, but I'm, I'm kind of greedy, I guess. I, I prefer actually <laughs> growing things I can eat. Uh, it, it has the same effect as the cover crop. Uh, there are some winter hardy grains like uh, oats and uh, some of the winter wheat. Uh, and there's also a legume that's supposed to be very hardy, although I've never tried it, called Austrian winter pea. But uh, if you do, maybe if you're only covering a couple beds, the other beds you could, you, that's another possibility if you could put some of these heavy crops and just sprinkle the yeah. seeds over them. And what that does is, uh, as they grow, they kind of insulate the soil. So they're ground covers that protect the, the soil. And then the, the only thing you have to watch out for is you have to turn them into the soil before they flower. Otherwise they could be, have kind of like a weed effect. Okay. Hmm. So is that good? Do you have any other questions regarding? Yeah, well, that's really helpful. Well, while coming, you guys are so um, encouraging. <laughs> Keep it on going. I guess December we have a few, a few, a few more weeks. When, when's like the the dead time, the cutoff time for working the soil? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is definitely a slower time, and we grow less outside, but we still grow inside. And now is like the plan. Next month, we'll talk a lot about planning for the spring. Mm -hmm. It's good to have these seasonal changes because particularly because you can have that moment to just reflect on your garden, observe a little more and plan for a you know, bigger and better harvest next year. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted to, so um, Dave, did you still wanna talk about composting or should I just go ahead and talk to them about sprouting or? No, I think you can go ahead. Okay, well, this will be really quick because most of the stuff is in your inbox already. But I wanted to encourage you guys even further to check out the email that I just sent on uh, logging into this. I just move this here so you can see. Logging into this, the new course. So we have a lot of the resources that you have in GIY uh, right now, but we wanted to organize it or give it to you guys in a more structured or like step by step way because of the feedback that we were getting. And so we have um, now the link that you, you would find, um, you'd find that in your inbox. You just click on it and you'll get to this page where you'll sign in. Um, and I'm gonna go in as a, as a user. So you guys will sign in with your email addresses and your password will just be your last name. So for instance, shouter123. One, one, and you can change, of course, your password anytime. And I just click the Remember Me button so that I don't have to do that every time. Um, and it would also be helpful to still be logged into the previous GIY um, platform because it sort of is, this is connected to it, as you see from these, um, from here above, you can travel to the courses that we are gonna be releasing little by little here to the forums. And that's a forum where we can actually talk and 
track what people's questions are and see the frequently answered questions. And so many people had um, questions regarding mushrooms during our mushroom webinar. And one of our GI wires is actually a mus mushroom expert. His name is Remus. And he had a ton of answers for some of them. So they were emailing each other back and forth and CCing me. And this, these forums will just help to see their answers or your answers, future answers and questions in a better way. And then the link to the Zoom calls are above there. So this is a, um, a sort of challenge, sprouting, sprouting challenge course where uh, you will have seven days or a week to just go from sprouts. Oh, now I can't, <laughs> I can't go by, I can't go back to my, what I've already done. Or you, you'll be able to see basically there. Oh, there, I can. So excited. Sorry. So I do a little in intro to what sprouting is. Um, I ask you a few, que like three questions about what you know about sprouting. And then I just give you day by day, like sprouting day one, day two, day three. So seven days of guided <laughs> how to start your own sprouts, which seems really simple. I'm sure you could do this on your own, but it's just to, you know, have some, some extra motivation, another coach beside you doing it the same as you will be doing. And all the questions on sprouting, what to sprout, where to sprout are answered, how to sprout are answered here. And then you can easily click to like slides, the resources and the forums from below that. And this is what the forums look like right now. So the GIY forums, you can see um, there are categories, like if you had questions now that we're in the winter season about garden design or just seed starting or just maintenance and harvesting, we've, we've categorized those. Um, and anything to do with sprouting, such as if you have sprouting recipes, you can put them up here or sprouting course photos so we can see your progress and you can document your progress and others can be inspired by you and put them up here too. So that's it. And then um, Andrea. Can, uh, can I, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Lam. Go. Um, just mention a little bit extra about the forums. The, this uh, framework that we're using has a lot, of, a lot of really cool things that we'll be introducing gradually. Uh, things like uh, challenges and moderators and stuff like that. But for now, uh, one of the cool things that, that's pretty handy is that if you, you can start a new discussion by clicking that uh, link on the left, uh, and then you'll be able to uh, track any comments. So you can get what they call notifications, and that can be useful. Uh, instead of having to log into the forum every single time, it, it can, you can choose whether or not to get an email if somebody has responded in that discussion. So there's a lot of like uh, filters for getting those notifications that can be pretty useful. Great. And because I am interested in Andrea's um, smoothie recipe, I will probably create another discussion, another category on just plain recipes. So, um, which will be here. So I will stop share. So that's it, and welcome, Merita Wieners. I'm not. Um, I'm. I am not familiar with. Like, maybe you're signing in with a different GIY name, but I'm not familiar. I, I think I know all the GIYers by name. But welcome. <laughs> Did you have a question about your garden as well? Let me unmute you. Hmm. Sometimes, sometimes um, GI wires log in using their um, husbands or kids accounts and um, I'm not familiar with, with their names. So I don't know who they are, or where they're growing from, but welcome anyways. All right, if you just want to listen in, that's fine too. And that was just our quick um, share about what is now available to you for the next week. If you choose to do it every day, um, you'll have content drip about sprouting and every day you'll get to set up your own sprouts and, and eat your own 
little microgreens without having to buy. I save a ton of money doing that because um, at the grocery, it's about two ninety nine for one little packet of sprouts. So, but then they're really nutritious and this is really fresher than anything, anything you can buy in the grocery. Oh, there you are. Okay, I will unmute you. Good evening. Oh, I'm Good evening, my Rita. <laughs> it's actually Daria using a friend's um Oh that's what I thought. Friend's account. Yeah. <laughs> I Hi Daria. Kind of changer, but yeah, Zoom's been off off uh, been weird today. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Hey. How, how you. is your garden doing? I know you did a major install this past <laughs> Yes, and I haven't checked it recently since the temperatures dropped. I meant to take yeah. a little video or pictures or something to show you finally before the call, but um, but didn't get to do that either. Um, and now again with the temperatures dropped last week, I put like a sheet over stuff. But anyway, in short, there's little daikon sprouts that um may or may not have probably survived these past couple of days. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So, um, so yeah. Yeah, so it's there. Things are moving, but I figure with this weather, they probably are going to just stay as little daikon sprouts. Um, and was wondering what I should do. Oh, okay. So, what do you think, Dave? Will those daikon sprouts still make it to spring? Um, I, I think if the if the temperatures drop down to the low twenties, uh, my experience with daikon is that. It, it starts to wilt or, uh, when it gets a little bit below freezing. So mm -hmm. you, you can't cover it at night. Mm -hmm. uh, we, earlier in the call, we talked about row cover. So that mm -hmm. might be an option because uh, even now I have beds that uh, I'm, I'm growing through the winter because mm -hmm. uh, I've got them protected. So. I think you you could if you wanted to protect them, you could still keep them alive. Mhm. Mm okay. Um, and I listened last to the call from last time where you talked about row cover also, mm -hmm. and um, it sounds so simple when you talk about things, and then there's some piece that also just feels like, oh gosh, wait to get, and then you got you get it, and then you cut it, and then you cut the wire things, and then you have to get the plastic things, but is it still too high up, and does it get light still, but gets warmth or protected, or um, those are some of my questions. Um, so I, we actually took some video uh, a couple of weeks ago on the okay. construction of a low tunnel uh, to, to supplement. I think we've taken some photos and written some some information about it, but uh, yeah. the video might be more helpful because it's it's kind of like step by step. Okay, great. The things are kind of, I didn't end up, um, the space is, how big is the space? They aren't really in rows because there are deer around, although I put, <laughs> it's kind of a mess, but anyway, I do have some um, like four feet high wire, chicken wire around. Um, that's mostly been keeping out the deers, except I didn't have enough stakes in the end. And it seems like I should have because the size of the plot is actually larger. I think it's maybe like 11 feet by 11 feet. Mm -hmm. um, it's not completely filled. Um, and certainly, so I put the daikon sprouts in like, oh, separate areas also, right, let alone for the deer for the, um, because you talked before about like intermingling species so that bugs don't you know, get on stuff and decimate things and things like that. So although there's nothing else intermingled with them, <laughs> I still thought it would be helpful to spread them out for some reason. So um, so I'm just wondering, because like the spacing, and that's where it's really too bad, I don't have any pictures to show you. Um, well, I can send you pictures um, later, again, after yes. I even see if they've made it through these last couple of days. Um, and then get any thoughts on what would really make space make sense for this kind of the way that the angle is of everything. The, uh, I mentioned a little bit about cloches, but there's also kind of like homemade little things you can do to protect if your areas is, are spread out and mm -hmm. you don't want to uh, cover everything because it's not really. Mm -hmm. worth it, then you can mm -hmm. you can do spot covers. So mm -hmm. there's a number of ways to to improvise um you can do things called cold frames so you can kind of 
build these things on the fly. One of the, the tricks that I've seen for a cold frame is you can get uh, these straw bales and they provide mm -hmm. the, the sides of the cold frame so that you kind mm -hmm. of throw something clear on top of it to seal it. But they provide a lot of insulation. That might be enough insulation. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. um, there's, I talked a little bit earlier about ways to protect individual uh, so we can send you some links on on something if you have your daikons here and there uh and, and you'd like to just protect those areas and not protect the whole thing that would be easier than mm -hmm. doing uh, a full-on low tunnel mm -hmm. okay i think you know the 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 area where the net the it's 11 by 11 that includes probably I know a foot and a half to walk around the whole thing on the inside. The 11 by 11 is where the fencing is, where the, um, you know, the chicken wire. So yeah. it's, um, so there's, yeah, probably whatever um, that is minus, you know, a foot and a half on each side. And then there's an aisle to come in from one of the long sides, or whatever, I guess there's a square. One of, from one of the sides you can come in, and then from the other side you can come in. So um, I don't know if that's helpful to think about. And um, so in that center plot, it's kind of divided actually into three sections, kind of like a, um, kind of like a U actually. Well, except that there's an entrance into the one side. So like a, like a J or an L, and then there's a, a little corner plot that has, you know, access from all the sides. Um, but then the other, like the J or the L, has access from all the sides as well. So if that makes sense, kind of those two things together. So, um, but again, there's you know major sections that don't have, or you know big chunks that don't have any um, anything growing in them yet. So, and some part of it needs just more dirt too. So, <laughs> like, I'll bring that up in the when it gets warmer when I have something to plant. Um, I was inspired last time also just hearing a little bit. Um, I didn't. I wouldn't have needed to go back, but about trying to plant garlic and potatoes and onions, is it too late to try to get that in the ground still? So I, I think some of the hardier alliums like um, uh, leeks and uh, garlic will still, especially if you're able to provide some kind of cover, and I think mm -hmm. they can, you could still have some success with those. Mm -hmm. um, I think potatoes might be a bit late. But, mm -hmm. I mean, you can bury the potatoes now, but I'm not sure if it really gets you an advantage over. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, you can experiment. I, I haven't had too much luck doing winter potatoes, but mm -hmm. uh, you could just try burying some potatoes that you get from the, mm -hmm. from the store and mm -hmm. uh, see if anything comes up in the spring. Yeah. Do you need to wait for the eyes to really grow some or um, for the garlic as well? Mm, no, you don't need to wait for the eyes for either for the mm. the potatoes or the garlic. But if you already mm -hmm. have some in your pantry that have like the little mm -hmm. green sprouts, then the, yeah. then you know it's on its way, so you can right. that eye. Yeah. Uh -huh. so Is it better to do that? To kind of let, since it's so cold outside, to let it get the kind of inner um, inner think, that get think, the sprouts uh, more. It's actually better to just just put the garlic in because. I think it's more sensitive to the soil as whatever chemicals are in the soil. I, mm -hmm. I feel like those are uh, more biologically active triggers. Than, mm -hmm. I mean, you can leave it in, indoors. You can actually, mm -hmm. you, uh, one trick is you can just plant the garlic indoors in an indoor pot until it's mm -hmm. dry. Mm -hmm. uh, and then transplant it outside. So that's, a, that's mm -hmm. another thing that will kind of speed things up. Mm-hmm. Um, what kind of spacing should there be between leeks and garlic and onions and or leeks and garlic and potatoes? Uh, so leeks you can plant very close together. They don't. They have a. They'll eventually develop quite a, a root system, but uh, mm -hmm. you don't seem to mind being next to other leeks. So you can. Basing with leeks, I, I do maybe like uh, six inches because leeks get pretty big. Like uh, if, if you plant leek, 
you, leeks are kind of these fire and forget plants that you you plant them and then you just forget about them and they they just keep on growing. When you pull them mm -hmm. out, you can get uh, easily some of them can get up to one pound each. Uh, well, and you don't pull them out until two years from the time you plant them, right, Dave? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I kind of uh, I start leeks from seed, but you can also buy leek transplants which is that's a pretty handy way for the first time uh you're growing uh, that's what i did the first year and that was really mm -hmm. effective it's a bit late to buy them now but in mm -hmm. the spring they'll have uh you can get some leak transplants so you, you put them mm -hmm. in around march or april uh, mm -hmm. and that's really rewarding because there's not much that eats alliums mm. so, you don't really have to worry. Like, I don't think deer will eat, eat alliums, really. Mm, uh, mm -hmm. And then the bugs kind of leave off of, off of them as well. As far as, great. as far as potato spacing, uh, I'm still experimenting a, a bit with that. Recommended technique for getting maximum harvest with a potato is to uh, hold them. But uh, generally, they they say the spacing for potato eyes should be about inches. I'm sorry, how many inches? Uh, twelve inches. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be any closer than twelve inches because mm -hmm. then you'll just get a, a bunch of small potatoes. Mm -hmm. And then the the trick with potatoes is you have to wait for them uh, well after they're. Uh, the top foliage has died before mm -hmm. you them out. So mm -hmm. um, the, the top foliage for a lot of potatoes will die around June or July. But you just mm -hmm. want to wait like a month after the foliage has died before you dig them out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for a garlic, Dad, what would the spacing be? Uh, uh, so garlic, what I do is I actually create a grid and mm -hmm. I'll, uh, garlic actually is one of the best companion plant, uh, annuals that you can plant it mm. almost anything that's around it. So I just plant the garlic everywhere, but I, I put mm -hmm. a lot of spacing in between it and then I'll, I'll How put much spacing? Uh, like, uh, maybe a foot and a half. Mm -hmm. Between, between garlic cloves garlic clove yeah I won't put them too close together and then I put all my mm -hmm. other plants in between the grid spacings so, uh -huh. so for the spring what I do is I'll create a single grid of garlic uh, sorry mm -hmm. a, a XY grid of garlic and then in between the squares that are formed by the garlic I'll put a fava bean Mm -hmm. and that provides my base, and then I put all these other mm -hmm. things around those. So that, that provides like the structural framework. If the the fava beans feed the, uh, the nitrogen fixation, and mm -hmm. uh, the garlic is just the general. Uh, it improves your soil. It keeps away uh, pests. So uh, the garlic is wonderful that way as a spring crop. Hmm. So if I try to plant it now, um, it would be harvestable before the spring, and then I would do like a second, uh, a second bunch in the spring or something. Like, and spring means Marchish to you, or the garlic is actually a slow. It's a biennial. Mm -hmm. You won't harvest the garlic until June. Uh huh. It, it, what will happen is it will kind of go dormant. Yeah, it's still growing, but there's not much going on during the mm -hmm. And then it'll mm -hmm. start to really start producing again in March. And you mm -hmm. wait till it's starting to flower, and mm -hmm. the leaves are starting to brown. When they start to brown, then you can, you can pull out the garlic. How, how about the daikon radish, Dave? That would be the earliest one that she would of her crops that she would pull up, right? Yeah, um, so radish, it, it either grows really fast or it, it doesn't produce uh, the roots 
very much. You'll get a lot mm -hmm. of top growth. Um, mm -hmm. So enjoy the green. Yeah, you'll be able to tell because you'll start to see right at the baseline of the soil. It, mm -hmm. It'll start to thicken up. And if, it, if mm -hmm. the daikon doesn't do that, then it's probably just going to produce a lot of top growth. So it depends and when a lot you say of, top growth. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Greens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which are delicious. Yeah. You, you wouldn't know the way. <laughs> yeah, so that would be your first. And then the, the potatoes are the, let me see what I wrote down. So the, the daikon radishes would be the first that you'd harvest in the spring, and then the garlics in June, and then the potatoes in August or September is when you harvest them. So this is long-term, mm -hmm. long-term planning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's good. I can just leave it and kind of water yeah. and kind of monitor and know that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but if you want short-term, okay. check out the, the sprouting course where you can sprout things indoors. Yeah, so we just got a cat who's six months old and we had a jade plant that was like in the corner in the house and there's too much dirt in there and she started pawing around and having oh, fun man. and so um yeah so i just realized hmm, i don't know about indoor starting <laughs> you know? i don't know we have to organize a basement maybe we could do something but then there's no natural light at all so, oh yeah um, it, it doesn't need that much. Like it's done in seven days, at least seven mm -hmm. to 14 days. And you can mm -hmm. do it like I was telling uh, last, last month, you might, might have heard that, Tanisha, you could like do it in a pencil cup or just a, a cookie tray or some, something with a little bit of a lip and put it in the middle uh -huh. of your table. And then just, mm -hmm. I just, yeah, if you go through the, if you look at the course and just watch yeah. the videos, which are very short. Even if you don't sprout anything, the many maybe at the end of the <laughs> while you're doing it, yeah. maybe at the end of the course you might sprout something. You know, decide oh I can do mm -hmm. this the only way. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just yeah. a little a little boost to keep us growing. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's so that's mm -hmm. to harvest the sprouts and to enjoy the sprouts during the winter time is the point of that. Not yes. to be transplanting the sprouts, of course. Yeah, not to transplant the sprouts at all. Just to like, that's it. You you you've grown your own food right away in in two. Mm -hmm. Less than two weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, All right. So um, it, it is nine oh six, and I just wanted to honor everybody's time. Oh. But Daria, if you have any other questions, um, do you want to just wrap up with one last thing or any last thoughts? Yeah, I guess um, just a last question. Thank you so much. I was putting the kids to bed, and you know how that sometimes can take longer and fall asleep and stuff like that. <laughs> combination oh. um, so I'm glad I got the end of this thank you so much oh, I'm glad that you did yeah yeah oh you welcome and, and um, yeah yeah um the and so the, the soil that we have right now is mostly again it's like the leaf compost from the local um uh you know the local public work center I don't know how out I did made it as deep as I could pulling it up there but with all the leaves that we've been collecting with the leaves falling I've been you know getting those so i assume i'll be getting more compost locally that i won't need to lug up to my backyard in this crazy way that we have the land here um but just any other thoughts about the dirt you know and the soil and like how deep it really should be for any of these especially these more root focused um, vegetables yes yeah, so around your daikon radishes you can even if you don't have a chipper because the first year we did this we didn't have a leaf mulcher leaf shredder mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. you can already gather the bags of leaves of your neighbors or your own leaves mm -hmm. rake them towards the garden and just mm -hmm. the leaf mulch around where the where the little daikon radishes you know are um, and mm -hmm. that'll help build up your soil just just by doing that simply by doing that okay um, okay great that's yeah, what I was so hoping that, yeah that's just one of you know of, of a way to do it the only thing different right. that the um, leaf mulcher does is it just decomposes it quicker than normal. Mm -hmm. but yeah, like right. it worked well for us even the first year. Okay, and we do have some worms that we are feeding inside, and so uh, so we hope to be getting what we just got. Um, so uh, so we hope to be getting some more soil, awesome. rich soil that way to go and put. There. Awesome! Yeah, and then mix that in there, mix that in there, even during the winter, it'll all it'll all build up. 
Great. And then you had mentioned about like covering the soil. So after we mix it in, should we again just try to collect the leaves and cover them? Cover the soil with the leaves? Oh, yeah. Or you does it really matter? Uh -huh. yes. Always cover the soil. Don't leave the soil bare uh -huh. then because it, it dries uh -huh. out. Yes, uh -huh. always cover the soil with something, some mulch, some leaf mulch. Is cool. Even, okay. Even if it's not being used to grow anything. Even if it's not being used to grow anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because then it'll be richer then, for you the next, next year. Okay, great. And then very last question. What do you suggest about, you know, we're in Tacoma Park. There's lots of leaves falling everywhere. Um, storing leaves, like, is that something that we really should be trying to store the leaves for use during the summertime and the springtime and things like that? Yeah. Or even... Yes. So if you have too, ma too much leaves, like a lot of leaves, even mm -hmm. if you don't have a compost bin, yes. uh, some, yeah. some other GIYers have done this. They just yeah. pile a mountain of leaves somewhere in their garden mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. let that decompose over the three months of the winter, you know, through the snow and everything. Yeah. That's their yeah. leaf mulch um, compost heap. Yeah. And yeah. if you do decide to mi mix in kitchen scraps or manure or something in there, I would just yeah. cover it with a big tarp that covers the whole thing. And then just yeah. the tarp every time you put in scraps or whatnot. But if it's but in, that, mm -hmm. that's so that the leaf, leaves don't blow yeah, away. Yeah. Got it. So is it um, helpful to just try to also keep some leaves as dry leaves in the garage or something to be used as a dry cover later? Or, I mean, it's, you know, the, without making things low, low stress, like, you know, talking about hay bales on the one hand, okay, I knew where to get them before we moved here, but where are the hay bales here? And then I have to like get the van and put the tarp down, da, 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 da. like, would it be better for me to just try to keep leaves to be using as an insulation and cover and between the rows and things like that? Or it's actually not so hard to find hay bales of hay and I just need to look up where they are and I'll find it. And, it's, and things aren't, you know, bales of hay that have all sorts of pesticides in them because however they're grown or... Uh, I think for the bales of hay, they're s seasonal in the garden stores, so mm -hmm. they'll be available around March. Um, mm -hmm. And then keeping the leaves in the garage, I don't mm -hmm. think you need to do it. I don't think you need to do it. I think mm -hmm. just let it let it um, let them compost dissolve. Then. Yes, let it compost into into. Um, and whenever right. you need the leaves for the spring, you'll find mm -hmm. uh, you will be given it. <laughs> <laughs> it'll come to you right. okay yeah, I, I think it's a kind of a seasonal thing because the, the leaves are great in the fall the spring and then you can grow some perennials that generate a lot of, of green uh, matter so they, uh, they generate a lot of leaves I would recommend mm -hmm. next year that you put in one or two comfrey plants mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we we might be able to even send you, uh, I have so many spare roots, so I could, I could probably mm. uh, get, get one or two Let me of those. just write that down. <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, they're really effective. It can grow something like four to five feet three times a year. And mm. you just cut it down each time it gets to about four or five feet. And that produces mm -hmm. a, a whole wealth of, uh, we call it a dynamic accumulator because it accumulates all these, rich trace elements in its leaves that are, are great hmm. uh, nutrients for other crops. Oh, great. And it doesn't matter that those would be more green leaves probably when like they're following or falling or harvesting versus the brown leaves that are now. So yeah. what's nice about the seasonality is that that'll start growing in February. So by the time you cut hmm. it down in April, uh, it's the right season for you to have green matter covering your, your uh, plants. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Great. Yay. Thank good you job. both so I'm much. Sure, yeah, I know that installation was really rough on you. So I just want to <laughs> congratulate you. You did great. Thank you. you did it. You put your, you installed your own garden. Yeah. You with your two boys and everything. So, Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Well, we'll call it a night, everyone. Thank you for being on. Um, just yeah, check your inbox for updates and we will see you after the holiday seasons, after Christmas, um, the week after, I think, right before New Year. So watch out for that.
Zoom check-in call then. Okay, good night. Good night.